When I design equipment, I try to combine good ergonomics, tool-like appearance, professional, clear visual design, and obviously very good sound quality. I'm Jonte Knief from Knief Audio, a company which I founded around 2005. My background is uh, originally mainly in music, but I have sort of double identity. I actually got into the polytechnic school in Helsinki and started physics, but I gave up with that very fast and uh, continued with the music studying harpsichord mainly. I eventually had to give up with harpsichord playing because of hand problems and I switched into music technology studies. And uh, I did have all the time I maintained some interest in electronics and especially loudspeaker design and some tube electronic things mainly for the consumer audio. But then when studying music technology, I really got into the pro audio. And after finishing the studies and uh, thinking for about one year what to do in my life, I sort of started to do what people were already re requesting. So I had one compressor, tube compressor, then a couple of years after that I had a channel strip and a pre-amplifier. Then after a few years I decided to sort of lift the quality level to more to a mastering studio standards. I inherited my grandfather's telephone can tube radio and uh, somehow immediately fell in love with uh, how the electronics looked like and got really interested in building something with tubes. Of course I knew what was uh, told about the sound of tubes and I actually also loved the sound of the radio. It was very, very pleasing. And uh, at that time I was not into pro audio at all, so I started to build some uh, tube amplifiers for uh, home listening. Eventually, when I started to build uh, pro audio stuff, I then had to more seriously think about what is the tube sound actually, what is essential and uh, how much I want to get into the, this very colored and distorted and um, a bit mushy world of the QB sound as it's, it's um, generally perceived perhaps. And I, I decided to take a sort of middle way, middle ground, so that there is a reason to use the tubes, but uh, the stuff I do is not overly colored so that it's as versatile as possible. So here we have uh, the Kniff Audio Soma equalizer, which is based on uh, tube technology, but on the other hand, uh, and maybe more importantly, it's uh, utilizing passive circuits. So there are circuits of coils and capacitors, which uh, make resonant circuits and don't need any active electronics to perform the EQing. The tube amplification is a single-ended transformer coupled output stage, which uh, creates a little bit of second harmonic distortion, but not too much to make it too colored. The gains, audio runs through the gain switches directly, but uh, the Q value and uh, frequency switches use logic circuits, which use relays to switch in the components which create the curves. That's because of the quite special nature of SOMA, how it performs the Q value and uh, how it is uh, different from typical passive EQs. This EQ had a predecessor, just a couple of units, which was a completely traditional passive EQ, so that uh, we had a Q value switch with, uh, I don't know, was it three or two positions? But the downside of the traditional way is that when you change the Q, you actually also change the gain. And uh, then I started to think that, okay, this is... Okay, some people get 
over it and around it and are happy with that kind of EQs, but it's still a bit annoying. You have to constantly compensate with the gain if you want to hear the difference of just the Q value change. And also you have a very limited range of Q values. You lose resolution in the gain. So I decided to make a passive EQ with the real Q value adjustment. And luckily with nowadays, well, actually, let's say, with the technique of 40 years back or, or so, it's pretty easy to make a real Q value adjustment. You just need a lot of components and a lot of good quality uh, relays and logical circuits and uh, binary switches to perform the mathematics, so, so to say, how to choose different capacitor and coil values for each Q and each frequency. These are the gain switches. The signal actually runs through all these resistors here when you EQ. Uh, but for the frequency and Q value, we have uh, binary switches, gray coded switches, which then the signal goes to the logic circuits on the main board here. And the logic circuits drive these banks of relays here, which switch the different inductance and capacitance values. So we have a uh, 11 different inductance values and 12 capacitors here. And the amplification part is then here. We have uh, sockets for the tubes. Here we have the input transformers. They are the biggest Lundahl line transformers, superb units. They also perform the MS coding with their multiple secondaries with the relays here. And also the plus 6 dB switch uses the multiple secondaries here. I'm making the coils, the inductive components for SOMA EQ circuits here. These are pretty critical components for the sound and the structure of the coil is quite special. I have to use paper insulation between the layers of wire to keep the parasitic capacitance as low as possible. So it's uh, quite a lot of precision manual labor. The development process of SOMA plugin taught me quite a lot about the difficulties involved in credible modeling of analog circuits, especially the interactions in some up between the inductances, between the coils and uh, between the bands of frequencies has been really, really interesting to discover and uh, discuss with the development team. I'm really happy about the results. The basic distortion characteristics of the makeup output uh, amplifier is very well done and also coil distortions are there just like they should be. My ears are not quite mastering grade, but so far when listening to the plugin and comparing it to the hardware here, they are really, really close, I have to say. The name, Soma, is actually Finnish. It means cute. And it's also the drug people use in Aldous Huxley's Brave New World and it's the body. So it's many things. I hope it's a safe drug for audio files in the studio world. <laughs>